Hi, welcome to An Ocean Life, a new series exploring our relationship with the world ocean. I'm Sean Chamberlain, and I'd like to invite you to spend this special day, World Oceans Day, exploring our unique relationship with the world ocean. When the first humans set foot on some ancient shore, they surely took advantage of all that the ocean offered. Shells were used as tools and weapons. The Chinese used cowrie shells as money dating back to 1200 BC. That the world ocean inspired early humans is evident in the many kinds of art they produced. Within a few short millennia, humans inhabited nearly every corner of the world ocean. The world ocean continues to supply an abundance of goods and services to modern humans. We hunt, farm, harvest, and eat its food. We extract salts, minerals, sand, even diamonds. We pump oil and gas. We turn the products of the world ocean into trinkets, jewelry. The world ocean provides medicines, health supplements, and beauty products. We visit the shores of the world ocean for rest, recreation, and contemplation. We build seaside villages, boardwalks, and piers complete with their own unique brands of entertainment. We create artificial ocean habitats, aquariums, in which we display all kinds of marine life. We write about the ocean, paint about the ocean. As scientists, we probe its mysteries, driven to know how the ocean works, yearning to know what lies beneath the waves. All of these things we so easily take from the ocean pale in comparison to the one thing the ocean gives in abundance, life. Few of us realize that all living things depend on the ocean for survival. We live because the ocean lives. When it rains, chances are that rainwater evaporated from the surface of the ocean. The world ocean dominates the water cycle of our planet. We can't live without water. Life in the world ocean supplies at least half the oxygen in our atmosphere and has done so for a couple billion years. We can't live without oxygen. Those same microbes form the base of an ocean food web that supplies food to humans across the planet. Many people depend on fish as their sole source of protein. Despite the best efforts of my hero and mentor Jacques Cousteau, the health of the world ocean is in serious decline. World fisheries, coastal and ocean habitats, and the ocean's chemistry are in a downward spiral. You wouldn't go into a hospital and start flipping switches and pulling wires on a patient's life support system, but that's exactly what we're doing to the world ocean. Most of the world ocean is overfished. We're simply hunting, capturing, and removing fish faster than they can reproduce. Fishing also takes its toll on species that fishermen didn't even intend to catch what's called bycatch. Most people think our beaches in Southern California are made of sand, but if you look more closely, you'll find plenty of cigarette butts, bits of styrofoam, and the source material for nearly all plastic, tiny little beads of plastic called nurdles. California's largest river, the Santa Ana River, collects the wastes of parts of San Bernardino, Riverside, Los Angeles, and Orange counties and empties them into the south end at Huntington State Beach. Along with plastics, the runoff carries oil dripped onto the pavement, pesticides, fertilizers, toxic chemicals, and anything else dropped or thrown into the streets. And that's just the storm drains. Marine pollution also includes what we put into our sinks and toilets. Sewage treatment doesn't remove the supplements, medicines, and hormones that pass through our bodies into the toilet. What effects are those having on marine life? A new entry in marine pollution is nuclear radiation. Nuclear material released from the Fukushima power plant following the 2011 tsunami made its way into the oceanic food web. Many forms of marine pollution might not be so bad if we weren't dismantling the natural systems designed to filter out these wastes. Estuaries serve as flyway travel plazas, rest stops for migrating birds. Oil spills always capture our attention, 
The heart-wrenching images of oiled seabirds and marine mammals strike a chord. Still, few of us are unwilling to completely stop using fossil fuels. How could we? Our lives depend on fossil fuels as a source of energy and materials. We burn coal to produce electricity to light our homes, power our appliances, entertain us, keep us connected with the world. But burning of fossil fuels has very real and severe consequences for the health of our ocean and the planet. Increases in atmospheric greenhouse gases cause the surface of our planet to warm. The one degree increase in Earth's average temperature might not seem a lot, but consider how you feel with a one or two degree fever. How about the other CO2 problem? Increasing atmospheric CO2 is causing the ocean to become more acidic. An increase in the ocean's acidity has been shown to interfere with the growth of certain kinds of marine life, certain species of plankton, mollusks, fish, and corals. While Scarlett O'Hara may have time to think about that tomorrow, we certainly do not. The day of reckoning for these human impacts on the world ocean falls squarely on those in whom we place our greatest hopes, our young people. Here's what students at Fullerton College think about that. Um, the human impact that concerns me the most is all the trash and plastic that gets released into the ocean. It's the overfishing, along with the ghost nets and the bottom trawling. Pollution and overfishing. Um, it really disgusted me finding out just how many cigarette butts are in the ocean. Um, our use of plastics, because plastics usually end up in the trash, will ultimately end up in the ocean. And uh, you know, ocean animals eat the trash, and then we eat ocean animals. We're basically eating our own garbage. And I think the thing that impacts the world's ocean the most is overfishing and the bycatch. A lot of endangered species, such as sea turtles, get caught in the bycatch, and that's very harmful to the food webs that naturally cause and it ends up having fisheries fish down lower on the food web. What I find with the World Ocean is, based on the information that I've collected about the video, is the acidification of the ocean. Y creo que mucha gente no se da cuenta del gran inmenso problema que, que es y deberían estar haciendo algo al respecto. So what can we do? Here's a few things I've done around my house to reduce or eliminate human impacts on the world ocean. It's part of what I call being an ocean person, living an ocean life. When I go to the market to buy seafood, I always look for the Marine Stewardship Council label. That's the best way to know that the fish and seafood I eat isn't harming the ocean. Instead of buying bottled water, I use 32-ounce Nalgene water bottles. I refill them from six-gallon bottles of filtered water that I buy from a local business owner. I hung a waterproof clock on my shower head. I limit my showers to five minutes. I put insulation in my attic. I installed ceiling fans. I installed energy saver bulbs. I keep the shades drawn to keep the house cool. I sleep with my cat to reduce the need for heating in winter. I use cold water to wash my clothes. I wash only full loads of dishes in my dishwasher. I recycle everything I can and support local recycling efforts. I dug up my front lawn and planted native and California friendly drought tolerant plants. I grow many of my own vegetables and I try to go meatless at least one day a week. I live close to the college where I work and I've started riding my bike more. Celebrating World Oceans Day means more than just thinking about the ocean and all that it provides. It's a day to take action and to begin practicing those things that will lead to a sustainable future for our world ocean. That's just what these students at Fullerton College aim to do. Uh, world Ocean Day, um, I'm going to attend a beach cleanup. And what are you going to do on World Ocean Day? Um, I think on June 8th, I'm just going gonna, gonna to help save water by showering with a buddy. No doubt the World Ocean provides an abundance of resources for all of us, yet its very health is in peril. That's why I hope you'll join me in declaring June World Ocean Month. One day is too short for something so important. You can learn more about the World Ocean at exploreworldocean.com. I hope you enjoyed the show. Happy World Oceans Day!